Hello everyone, welcome to the PyCharm Fast API tutorial series. In this tutorial, we will be working with Helm. In simple terms, Helm is a package manager for Kubernetes. It is a tool that streamlines installing and packaging Kubernetes applications. Think of it like apt or yum or homebrew, but for Kubernetes. I'll be showing a high level use case of Helm. We won't be getting a deeper dive into Helm. Let's begin by installing Helm. I'll go to the official website of Helm, and that is helm.sh. I will click on Getting Started. I'll then click on Installing Helm under Introduction. As you can see, there are multiple flavors of installing Helm. Either you can install directly from the binary or scripts or apt or homebrew, etc. I'm using Ubuntu, so I will follow the apt installation commands. Okay, we have successfully installed Helm. We're going to work with Helm charts. Helm charts are simply Kubernetes YAML manifests combined into a single package that can be advertised to your Kubernetes clusters. Obviously, we need to store these charts and that is where we look for a Helm repository. At a high level, a chart repository is a location where packaged charts can be stored and shared. The official chart repository is maintained by the Helm charts. You can store charts in private repositories like in Amazon S3 or GitHub pages. You will find all the Helm charts in artifacthub.io. Let me try to check for the Nginx package. As you can see, there are multiple charts for Nginx. Some have been uploaded by organizations and some by users. You can filter them out based on verified publishers or official providers. This is how we are going to follow the installation steps. First, we're going to add the Bitnami repository, and then we will install the Helm chart and name it as first-release. Let's move to PyCharm. I will show a quick walkthrough of how it works. We have added the repository successfully. For getting a list of repositories, I'm going to type Helm repo list, which will return the list of repositories present in our system. Once you have added a repository, we can search for various software packages provided by Bitnami. We're going to search for Drupal, which is also packaged by Bitnami. Drupal is an out-of-the-box web content management tool, as well as a customizable platform. It is an open source CMS. I will type Helm search repo Drupal. You can observe we got the latest version of Drupal 9.2.7. Chart version and app version are completely different. App version is pointing to the stable version of Drupal. I'll try to search again, but this time I will append dash dash versions, and it's going to return a list of all Drupal versions. You can install multiple versions of Drupal simultaneously, and this is how Helm makes life easy for you. Now I will try to search for the Nginx package. As of this recording, 1.21.3 is the current stable release for Nginx. 
I will move forward and install an Nginx chart. Once a chart has been installed, you can check them by typing the command helm list. Let's begin installing Nginx. I will type the command helm install my dash release bitnami slash Nginx. Here the release name is my dash release. When you use a chart reference with a repo prefix like bitnami slash Nginx, Helm will look in the local configuration for a chart repository named bitnami and then will look for a chart in that repository whose name is Nginx. As you can see, the installation is complete and these are the few notes provided on how to check the application. The app has been deployed in the default namespace and it's running on local port 80. And this is how you can get the service IP and service port. I will type helm list, which is going to provide a list of releases in the default namespace. The app version is 1.21.3, which has been deployed. I will type minikube service list, which is going to provide me with the list of services that are running. As you can see, the my-release-nginx is running on port 30214. I'm going to quickly check in the browser. I will try to search for a different version of Nginx and try to install that. Currently, we have installed the latest stable release, so I will go for an older release. I will type the command helm install my-release-2 bitnami slash nginx dash dash version 6.0.0. Version 6 is the chart version, which indeed is going to install the nginx 1.19 version. I will type helm list. As you can see, there are two versions of nginx running parallel. One is 1.21.3 and the second is 1.19.0. If I now type minikube service list, I will get two different ports. Even though we got 443, we're only concerned about port 80. The latest release is running on port 30214 and the older release, which is my release two, is running on 30499. So this is the simplest use case of Helm. You can observe the benefits of using Helm charts also, you can roll back or upgrade Helm charts. When you type Helm list, it will provide a list of releases in the default namespace. You can also pass all dash namespaces to get all releases present across namespaces. You can also update the repository by typing Helm repo update. Update gets the latest information about charts from the respective chart repositories. If you want to delete or remove the resources, then you can type helm uninstall release. I'm going to uninstall release two as well. If I now type helm list, it will return empty. In the background, Kubernetes will be clearing up the resources. There's one more command called helm history which fetches release history. Currently, we don't have any releases. Let me try to install Nginx again. I will type the command helm history my release. As of now, the rev revision is one and the app version deployed is 1.21.3. In the future, when you'll be doing an upgrade or rollback of your releases, this history command will keep, all the, will keep track of all the changes done. If you want to read the instructions, basically the notes, then you can type helm get notes by dash release. It will provide a brief note about how to access your application. So these are a few of the benefits of using Helm. Let's move back to PyCharm and create a custom Helm chart for our application. I will create a directory under the root and name it charts. I will open up my terminal and go inside the directory. I will type helm create fastapi-helm. This is going to create a new chart. 
Let me explain one by one. Chart.yaml, this file basically contains metadata about your chart. The API version is basically the chart API version, which is V2. This is basically pointing to the Helm 3 version. If API version is V1, it's basically telling us that it uses a previous version of Helm. Description is something optional. You can give a brief information about your application. Type of chart can be an application or a library chart. As we are working on an application, it's going to be an application chart. According to the Helm docs, a library chart is a type of Helm chart that defines chart primitives or definitions which can be shared by Helm templates in other charts. This allows users to share snippets of code that can be reused across charts, avoiding repetition and keeping your charts dry. Don't repeat yourself. Version is basically pointing towards the chart version and app version is basically the application version. Charts are identified using the version number, like in this example, 0.1.0. .0. Next comes the Helm Ignore. Similar to Git Ignore, the .helm ignore file is used to specify files that you don't want to include in your Helm chart. You can observe the empty chart directory. We're going to place all our dependent charts over here. The template folder contains all the Kubernetes manifest files. You can see they have pro provided sample manifests for Nginx applications. We're going to replace it with our manifest files, which we defined earlier when we were working with Kubernetes. You're going to find a unique file called underhelpers.tpl. This is basically a named template written in the Go templating language. A named template also is referred to as a partial or a subtemplate. Files whose name begins with an underscore are actually rendered to Kubernetes object definitions, but are available everywhere within other chart templates for use. The Helm client and library, they're both written in the Go programming language. The library uses the Kubernetes client library to communicate with Kubernetes. We can also define tests in our Helm charts. You can define as many tests and you can even create a test suite. And finally, the values.yaml file. This contains default values, which are passed in templates. You can dynamically override this value when you're trying to install the chart, which is quite helpful when you're using CI or CD solutions. As I said in the beginning, we won't be getting a deep dive into Helm for in-depth knowledge. I'd recommend to follow the official Helm documentation. I've already created the Helm charts for this tutorial. I'm going to replace it with the default one. As you can see, we've replaced our files in, these, in the Kubernetes manifest exactly similar to what we did in our previous video when working with Kubernetes. The only difference is that we have parameterized those values like the namespace and app version. As we have some memory constraints, I will pull down my memory and CPU consumption. I've slightly modified the chart.yaml file with basic information. In the values.yaml file, you can observe that we're only using the engine X image. You might wonder why I haven't included the backend image for e-commerce. 
It's a very basic helm chart as I wanted to keep things, but you can go forward and add as much customization as you want. I'm not using image pull secrets or service accounts, so I'm ignoring that. You can see how we import values through the templating syntax using the double curly braces. As I said earlier, I have explicitly ignored parameterizing the e-commerce fast API image, but you're free to do that. I've done the same for secret. As you can see, I've parameterized only a few things, but you have the power to even customize the port number as well. Let's now try to install the custom Helm chart, which we have defined. I'll open up my terminal and move inside the charts folder. I will type Helm install my app, fastapi-helm, and also I'll provide the namespace. Even if you don't have the specific namespace, nothing to worry, you can directly create the namespace through Helm itself by passing dash dash create dash namespace. Great, the chart has been installed. As you can see on the screen, the instruction is coming from the notes.txt file. This file doesn't get installed. I've provided very minimalist information. Let me quickly check how my pods are performing. Everything is running and the migration is also complete. I will type minikube service list. The application is running on port 30790. Let me try it out. Great, finally it works. So you saw how easy it was to perform repeatable deployments in Kubernetes using Helm. Also, there are many, many commands which we haven't used like the linting. I will type Helm lint fastapi-helm. It basically runs a series of tests to verify that the chart is completely perfect or if there's any syntax error or not. If the linter encounters things that will cause the chart to fail installation, it's going to emit error messages. You can even package the chart and deploy to private or public repositories like GitHub Pages or S3 or any other Helm repository platform. There's one other command which I forgot to mention, and that is Helm List, which displays the list of releases. I'm going to type Helm List. As the list is pointing to the default namespace, I'll try to get the list from all namespaces. Yes, we got the My App, which has been deployed in the FastAPI-Project namespace, and the app version is 1.0.0. Now I'm going to uninstall it and show how easy it is to manage via Helm. As you can see, all the resources are getting terminated. This command is quite comfortable compared to the manually delete pod, deployment, service, etc. There are many which we didn't cover when working with Helm. I definitely recommend that you check the official documentation or else you can check out a great book, Learning Helm, which is written by the creators and maintainers of Helm. This book covers everything related to Helm, either working with templates or deploying charts. This is the one-stop solution for Helm. Thank you everyone. I'm going to see you in the next video where I'll be working on the Elastic Kubernetes service offered by AWS. Mm -hmm.